Security Onion is a free and open platform for threat hunting, security monitoring, and log management. It includes interfaces for alerting, hunting down threats, ingesting PCAP files, detection engineering, and even a case management system. Now, Security Onion isn't new. It's been around since 2008, and here in 2024, it's a very complete and mature security threat hunting product. I will really say it's helped me better understand my network, better understand threat hunting. And my reason for doing the video is not because of sponsorship, because this is not sponsored in any way. I'm choosing to do it just to raise some awareness because people ask me, what's a good tool to run in my home lab? And also a good tool that might scale up to enterprise scale if you're an internal IT team and would like to use this. And security is the same answer for both of those. It can really level up your skills, give you a better understanding of things. It can really tap into your network with a port tap for those that don't get it. All right, I'll stop with the jokes and let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Security Onion has great documentation. I highly recommend taking the time to read it. Matter of fact, first, click the download. It's about a 13 gig download here in 2024. As I said, it's pretty big. It's a pretty in-depth product. Therefore, while it's downloading, take the time to read the manual. Because one of the first things you have to understand when installing Security Onion is the different architecture and use cases. The simplest architecture is the import node. This allows you to import PCAPs and analyze them with Security Onion, but doesn't give you all the other features. This is rather lightweight, faster install, but pretty cool if you want to just analyze some PCAP files that you acquired from your firewall, Wireshark, or however you acquired them, and do some analyzing. Evaluation mode is the next one, a little bit more complicated because this is where you can set up that port tap and have it listening in on the network, but it still doesn't give you all of the features. It's just for evaluating and not taking the time to really go in in-depth setup. Then we go down to standalone mode. This is probably going to be a little bit more popular for people who want to really dive into Security Onion, and this is where you want to dedicate one piece of hardware to it, preferably, especially as I mentioned with the port tapping, unless you're familiar with how to do a port mirror, then also port mirroring inside of a virtualization system, which can be a little bit complicated depending on which one you're using. The real hardware option is probably the best. And either one of these, whether it's the evaluation or standalone one, does require a minimum of of two network interfaces. And those network interfaces have to be in promiscuous mode, or at least one of them does, in order to ingest all of the data across your network. That can be a little bit complicated, but they do have some information in terms of how they expect to be set up. And of course, consult your firewall and or switch documentation on how to do any port mirroring with any of those. Now, standalone mode is pretty intensive. Uh, do make sure you have enough RAM, at least 16 gigs, I would say, is probably the minimum to get that working. That's what I did for my demo here. I did virtualize it for uh, the demo I'm going to show to you today. Uh, they also have, and maybe I'll do a separate video on this because I think it's kind of novel, a desktop mode. And the desktop mode is for, well, running a desktop environment, but still being able to tap in and listen via the network miner and Wireshark to do analysis on the traffic that's going by. So pretty neat. Now, for those of you wondering, uh, does it scale? And I mentioned this in the beginning about enterprise environments. Oh yeah, you can build forward nodes, a manager, search nodes. And this is because when you start doing full PCAP and ingestion of all the data across the very large scale network, you need to individualize all these individual devices and then build a network between all the security and devices. And of course, a large scale storage system to store it all. So they have some instructions on that. This might be out of scope for most people that are sitting up in their home lab, uh, but standalone is probably pretty reasonable to get going. So I'd probably choose that. And that's what I'm doing for this particular demo. Once you boot the ISO, choose Install Security Onion, then say yes to erase the drive. Then you're going to set an admin username and password. Once the install completes, you're going to reboot and then log in with that admin user and password that you created. 
Then the menus will guide you through the type of install. For this demo, we're gonna use the standalone mode. Then you're gonna set up the networking. Then choose the NIC or NICs that'll be used for listening to the tap in promiscuous mode. From there, we create a web admin user and password to log in with. And securing in does not allow just any network to talk to the web management interface, so you have to choose the IP of your computer or the subnet your system is on that you'll be logging in from. Once that's completed, it does take quite a while to get set up, so be patient. Now, once the system's loaded, the email address and password that you created for the web interface, you're just going to go to the IP of the securing in and log in and you're presented with an overview. Now of note, I am ingesting syslog on here. Even though Security Onion is listening with syslog services, it does not automatically ingest any of that data. And the way you do that, and you'll find this for all your configurations, you're gonna go down here to administration and configuration. And you're gonna to have to create a firewall rule, but don't worry, that's easy enough to do. We go down here to the host groups and we'll go down here to syslog. And what I've done is say, anything coming from this network, but you can be more implicit and specify like only your firewall's IP address here. And by putting that IP in and hitting save, that will allow it to start listening to something that's coming from that range and ingesting logs. I want to show that because if you're not seeing any logs at all, or you didn't set it up in promiscuous mode, and actually I didn't for this particular demo, I just wanted to push some syslog in there to get you an idea of what it would look like. So let's go here to the dashboard. And through here, we can choose things like overview. And this gives us a nice overview feel for all the different data in here. You can see some IP addresses, some of the data is coming from the syslog, and just a lot of general information. Now, when you want to drill down or look at a couple different views, we can even look at, for example, the SOC logins. And there's my IP address logging in a count of seven times that I logged in here. Now the interface has a common way it works where you have all these different things such as alerts, host server view. These are a lot of predefined ways you can start drilling down on a dashboard or at least getting to where you wanna be in terms of looking at all the data. Let's go ahead and click here and say include only things from 172.16.16.9. This allows me to drill down and start looking at more and more details of what information was pulled from that IP address and where it went and what it's logging is itself. Because security in doesn't just log external things, it'll actually also log things like your own logins to it. Now let's take a look at the alerts. I have just a couple of alerts in here that were triggered off of syslog. A count of four for P2P client info, something that is detected via the syslog. If you want to drill down, include or exclude or only, you can go through each of these or tune the detection. Uh, you also can drill down. And what the drill down means is give me all the data that triggered that particular alert. So it's Sericata. There's a network information about what triggered it, all the details around it. Now, I have it set up so it's not doing full PCAP, but if it was, you'd be able to pull a PCAP out of each of these. Let's go back over now to the hunt. Hunting is where you can go through any of these alerts and drill down further, but also create cases and try to hunt and create the correlating data on here. And then we have cases. When you find something, and I'd actually set up a YouTube demo case, this allows you to create a case for each incident. And this is what you do as a security manager. You start the investigation, you start the case, you can look at the open cases in here, or you can even start a new case, include attachments, what the observables were. And by observables, it actually lets you keep adding things to existing cases. So while you're going through these detections or going through the dashboard with different alerts, you can add them to an existing case to essentially build your threat hunting case through here. Going further down, we have detections and we have several ways we can group them together. For example, we only want to look like all detections that are enabled, all detections that are disabled, and the same drill down information where you include or exclude or only group by, et cetera. The same kind of menu system works throughout here. But grid is interesting because it shows you the status of Security Onion, it says that it's set up as a standalone, it has the IP address here, it tells me if the system is okay. Also worth noting, you can go down here at the bottom and upload your own PCAP file. This is great if you have PCAPs that you captured from elsewhere that maybe Security Onion was not capturing, but you want to load that data in so it correlates with all the other data. Now we get here to downloads. This is really clever because it allows you to set up agents for Windows, Linux, or Mac, so you can actually have their data pulled right in here from the agent. But I did realize that if you have a self-signed certificate, which is what it's gonna set up by default, this doesn't work properly. To get that to work though, pretty easy. Go over here to the Elastic Fleet, 
And you'll see Security Onion and the Fleet Server, these are the ones that are registered by default, and I added this Debian 12 lab. The way you add this is you have the Add Agent. We're going to go ahead and do an endpoint and install and scroll down. I'm going to choose the Linux one. We're going to go ahead and copy this command. Paste the command in the system you want the agent to install in, and then we're going to use the tac tac insecure option. This means ignore the self-signed certificate, and then the agent will install. Now I can go back to the dashboard, drill down to only this particular Debian 12 lab server that I have in here, see the processes, files, and network connections that it's making, and then also scroll down here and expand out any of the details for any of the events that were triggered on it, or if there's a security alert, these are just notices for things that were done. It gives me a lot more context data when I need to search for anything such as a file that was created or changes that were made. Now, my goal in this video was to raise some awareness about Security Onion and how awesome of a tool it is. So I didn't really go full in depth for the entire breadth of features that are baked into Security Onion, which even includes CyberChef, which is really awesome if you need to create some recipes to decode some of the findings that you have. But I also want to encourage people to check out further the Security Onion YouTube channel and videos they've done, including a video I have linked right in my description, which will cover how to set it up as I did, but a little bit more. And then also, if you start at the 21 minute mark, because they don't have any timestamps in there, at least as of right now, uh, you can go through an entire threat hunting scenario and show you how to build a case. I think it's a great video. I watched it myself. I did a great job on it, but the YouTube algorithm has not been super kind to bubbling it up to the top. So go ahead and like and subscribe to the Security Union channel. And while you're at it, like and subscribe to mine. It is greatly appreciated. Let me know what you think of Security Union. Leave some comments down below. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion, head over to my forums, forums.learnsystems.com. Love to see you join there. If you want to dive into some of these topics that I talk about on the channel, if you want to hit me up on any of the socials, you'll find them at lawrencesystems.com. Hit me up whatever's available there. And thanks. Appreciate it. Take care.